July 6, 1989. Physicists from the University of Minnesota test out a new low-light camera. They plan to use it for a high-altitude rocket experiment. They point the camera east, a random choice, at some stars and what looks like a distant thunderstorm. They play the tape back. Something catches their attention. Two funnel-shaped flashes of light. They last for just a few thousandths of a second. The team estimates that the flashes are 20 miles above the clouds and an astonishing 12 miles tall. By pure chance, they've captured something new to science. From his research lab at Duke University, North Carolina, Professor Steve Kummer searches for these strange specters. It's exciting to be part of something fundamentally new that no one else has seen before, and it's uh, kind of a big surprise that these things have been there the whole time and nobody knew about it. The twin pillars of lights flicker above a thunderstorm in the distance. So what are they? Around the world, lightning scientists are on the hunt to find out. They don't have to look far. Scientists review hundreds of hours of video taken from the space shuttle. To their amazement, there are dozens of these strange apparitions, just waiting to be identified. Low-light cameras are trained on the skies. High-altitude aircraft fly above storms. Soon, there are thousands of recorded sightings. Everybody was surprised by how common they in fact were. It's just one of those cases, once you know what you're looking for, all of a sudden, you see a lot of them. Scientists call them sprites because of their elusive, ghostly appearance. They seem to dance above the thunderclouds in the night sky. In groups of two or three, they last less than 10 thousandths of a second. Researchers from the University of Alaska Fairbanks calculate they occur in the middle atmosphere, 25 to 60 miles above the Earth, and can extend up to 30 miles across. Observations suggest sprites are related to lightning. But how? In a field in North Carolina, antenna pick up the radio signals produced by lightning. Steve Kummer uses these to listen to the radio noise made by individual lightning bolts. The equipment is so sensitive, he can detect lightning as it happens anywhere on Earth. Every one of these individual pulses is one of those radio pulses from a lightning stroke somewhere in the globe. Kummer uses this data to measure the size of each bolt. He matches this with sightings of sprites from other research stations. A pattern emerges. Sprites occur in the fractions of a second after lightning strikes, but only after the most powerful lightning bolts. Kummer thinks this huge release of energy causes a disturbance in the atmosphere above. This high-speed footage, the most detailed film of a sprite ever shot, supports Kummer's theory. 45 miles up, electrical charge momentarily increases. It triggers a giant spark. Millions of electrically charged particles accelerate outward at 33 million feet per second. Sprites tend to be about 40 miles high. The bottom here is maybe 25 miles, and the top is 60 or 65 miles. Sprites come in many shapes and sizes, from the so-called A-bomb sprite, up to 60 miles in diameter, to a tall, skinny one, less than a mile wide, and nicknamed the Diet Sprite. Five years after the first sprite was spotted, researchers from the University of Alaska Fairbanks hunt for sprites high above a monster storm. They use a sensitive low-light camera and capture the first ever color images of sprites. It's a spectacular surprise. What causes this colorful display? With each new discovery, come new questions. <laughs>